Here we are at the end of a year. I'm taking a little break from the show, from doing the podcast. Uh, I'm more in the middle of kitchen renovation, so, you know, messed up walls. Uh, gives me time to do those things. But when we take downtime, it gives us time to reflect, time to figure out, you know, what are we doing? What do we want to do for the next year? What have we done in the past year? Now, this year was uh, tumultuous for a lot of us, to say the least. And that really brings me to the question I asked each and every one of my guests this year, what's the purpose of sport? And another way to think about that is, why do we compete? Why do we do the things we do? Why do we get out there, push ourselves, and test ourselves to the limit? Now, I've got my own answer, and everybody has their own answer, but a lot of things transcend sports. So, without further ado, the rest of this video is going to be all of the answers I've compiled from all the different people in all the different sports, all my guests this year on season two of the Smart Athlete Podcast. I hope you enjoy, and if you would, in the comments below, let me know what do you think the purpose of sport is. Wow, that's a, that's a real metaphysical question there. <laughs> a little bit. Yeah. Well, I, you know, from a personal standpoint, I think it uh, uh, should be all about enjoyment and, and uh, setting goals and challenge yourself. You know, for me, it's just a matter of just trying to see um, – how far I can push myself, you know, how much I can improve. It's kind of both a physical as well as an intellectual challenge for me, mm -hmm. you know, to try particularly around the, the training aspect of it. Um, and I think from a societal standpoint, it, you know, it's a great opportunity, sport is a great opportunity for um, a change of mindset, a relief, you know, like going to the movies. Mm -hmm. you, know, you, you have a little time out from the, the, the hectic nature and stressful nature of the lives that most of us lead. And it's just a nice breather to enjoy uh, something different and, and marvel in the accomplishments of highly fit, highly talented athletes. What do I think the purpose of sport is? I mean, most parents are going to tell you that it's uh, just a way to get their kids some energy out of their system when they come home and they're ready for dinner and to go to bed. Um, so there's there's a couple a couple of things that I think sports teaches that it doesn't matter what you play, what level you're at. Um, number one is uh, how to set goals and how to um, how to attain those goals and the sacrifice required to do that. Uh, and then number two is um, the greatest life teacher of all, which is adversity. Um, sports creates adversity, and um, you know for us with playing coaching high level kids. In, in hockey, you have to miss a lot of your events that your buddies are going to. And then also that's your commitment. And then your adversity is like, hey, when things aren't going your way, how are you going to overcome that? And in the big picture is, is one hockey game with 14 year olds, you know, going to alter their lives? No, but if they're able to overcome that adversity and say, okay, I've done that once. Now something hard happens in life they're going to have the tools already to be able to deal with those things. And I think those are, those are the two things, commitment, like goal setting, and then adversity. So those are, those are the two things I think are, are the biggest teachers in sport. Purpose of sport, just, uh, just general, just in general sport. What, however you want to answer that question. Wow. Yeah. That's a great question. Um, what is the purpose of sport? You know, I think it's, it's our playground. It's our playground to um, uncover and unravel um, the beliefs that we have built um, about ourselves. And I think sport allows you to, uh, to test the mind. I know it tests the body, but I, I believe it, it allows you, if you're open to it, to test the mind and to open up to, to possibilities that that you may have not seen at all in, how, in, in the years of your life, but for some reason um, they appear. And sport can bring that out. And, and, and if you have a healthy relationship with sport and without attachment, then it can, be, it can be an education on yourself. Yeah. Yeah, so I've been prepared for this. <laughs> 
Uh, and there's so many different ways that I could answer this question. I think there's a lot of purposes. I'm going to answer the question for myself personally. What mm -hmm. does sport give to my life? And that is 100%, absolutely, it gives me balance. Uh, so I feel that I'm a better scientist because of my athletics. Uh, and I feel that the, the lifestyle that I need in order to be a, a high performance in my athletics is exactly the lifestyle that I need to be at top performance in my job. And that's a, a healthy sleep schedule, a healthy diet, exercise, discipline, consistency, so for me, athletics is, it brings balance. I would also say joy. Uh, I love my workouts most days. <laughs> and I love racing. And, uh, you know, sometimes science just doesn't work. And sometimes you just have bad days or bad weeks. And being able to balance that with, oh, I had an awesome run today, I, uh, or an awesome bike or swim, is just it, it keeps me going and it it always keeps me excited about something and moving forward so that would be my answer to your question it, uh, to me uh, the purpose of sport is balance and joy that is a great question <laughs> wow it, so you know, okay, so I, when I think about this, I think of why do I have my three preschoolers in sports right now? Mm -hmm. And one, re one thing that I have, especially one of my children in sports, is to learn perseverance through mm -hmm. difficult things and difficult challenges, right? Um, and I think that's the probably the biggest thing that I learned from a career of swimming is I had so many ups and downs, injuries, you know, changing coaches, losing pools, you know, not being able to train and finding ways to persevere through that in new and different ways. Um, and I think, you know, for one of my children, that's, that's my primary purpose is to have her in sports right now is to learn, hey, things aren't going to go your way, but pick yourself up and keep going and you're going to um, learn at the end. Um, learn about yourself. I think that's another big thing that I learned in sports is you learn a ton about who you are as a person um, and in new ways. Yeah. And for me right now, the thing that I'm learning about sports is um, continuing to maintain some relationships with those around me outside mm -hmm. of my house. Right. I think that that's one thing that sports, is, that sports gives us that unfortunately we can't do that much right now during this year, current year. And the thing that I'm missing is like swimming, working out with my own team. Mm -hmm. um, so you learn a lot about other people, um, you know, it attracts people of, um, that all like swimming together. Um, and so there you go, you have something to talk about right there. So right. Right. I think that that's what, it's a really meaningful thing for me. Yeah. That's a great question. Um, I, Oh, it's so many things. I, I feel like it, I feel like it gives you, for me, I guess it gives me focus. Um, and, 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 you know, I, for <laughs> swimming is kind of a unique support. It's very sensory deprived, right? Mm -hmm. Especially this summer I spent, I spent my time, you know, transitioning from a pool because the pools were all closed to swimming open water. So my, my, my lap was now a kilometer. Um, uh, and so, um, it's very sensory deprived, and for me, I, I find that it allows me to kind of think and and recenter and, and focus. Um, um, you know, some people see it as a distraction. I I think I you know it, it gives it gives me an outlet to um, to focus and 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 unplug. You know, especially swimming. As I said, it's very unique. You know, I don't I I can't listen to music. I you know I can't talk to other people while I'm running side by side. You know, my my you also learn how to become a very good uh, you know 10 second conversationalist when you're doing interval training in the pool. You know, you have conversations yeah. that like <laughs> broken up into into very short pieces. But yeah, I, so for me, I think. Um, it's about focus, and maybe that's why I gravitated towards swimming. Is I, I like the kind of unplugging, the solitude, no phones, no music, no no anything but me and my thoughts. Uh, the purpose of sport. I mean, 
enjoyment? It's the same answer. <laughs> I don't know. Is there more? That's what I think. <laughs> no, that's good. I think the purpose of sport is honestly to learn life lessons. I think that's really what it comes down to. And you can do it. You can learn life lessons, you know, not being in sports. So I don't think you have to be in sport to do it, but I think sport is an amazing vehicle and able to do that. You know, I knew you were going to ask me this and I tried to think about it and I was like, <laughs> I can't like, I can't come up with a good succinct answer. Um, but, but I'll start off by saying, I think sport can be, different for everyone. It can have a different purpose for everyone. For some people, it's their meditation. For some people, they solve all of their life problems on it. For some people, it's the community. Um, and it can, I feel like it even changes for me on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. You know, we were talking earlier about how awesome the endurance community is, especially in terms of travel and you, you can go meet someone and feel right at home. And I think for me, sport has given me an incredible sense of, of community um, with just the people I've met, the, the opportunities I've been given through that community uh, has been really, really awesome. Um, and it's turned into a social thing for me. Mm -hmm. a, a lot of the time, uh, I, don't get me wrong, I, lo I love riding my bike just to ride and running to run, but I like doing it more with other people. You know, mm -hmm. I like sharing that experience with people, um, getting to, you know, ride down how I want. I look to my left and go, holy crap, and, and turn to my buddy and be like, are you seeing this? Like, how lucky are we? How privileged are we that we get the, the ability to do this in our free time? Mm -hmm. uh, and so that's, that's really special. But as, as COVID has been happening, that sense of community has kind of been taken, taken away. Mm -hmm. And, and now it, it's just kind of giving me like a connection to outside, which it always has, but it's kind of being elevated right. um, in the current times. And um, I try not to listen to music or, or podcast too much when I'm actually outside on the road riding. I like mm -hmm. to hear the cars, I like to hear the birds chirping, hear other people. Um, and it's, it's just been really nice to kind of back away from trying to go hard all the time and just being out there to be out there. Mm -hmm. uh, I went on my first bike packing trip trip last weekend. I did an overnighter in Santa Cruz, just off the side of highway one. Mm -hmm. It was just so nice just to feel the wind on my face and just be outside and smile and see people with joy on their face, riding a bike or running or hiking with their families. So mm -hmm. um, I don't know. I don't, I don't want to be cliche and say it gives me a sense of feeling alive, but it, it really can sometimes it's yeah. the sense of being alive and the sense of community, I think are the, the, the two biggest things for me with sport. The main one, do I get only one or can I you say so? Whatever you want to say, and you can give okay. multiple answers. You can, it can be personal. It can be broad. However you want to answer it. Okay. Um, uh, so for, from my own point of view as, as the athlete, right, I would say it's, um, it's a way of life, right? It's a lifestyle. And so I, I know I can only be happy and feel good about myself if I exercise every day. Mm -hmm. um, and because of that, I guess, positive energy, like mm -hmm. the people who live with me are also in the same boat, right? Every, they all exercise as well, but like everybody is relaxed and, and happy and having a good time because of well thanks to sports really um you know that's not everyone's lifetime and that uh, lifetime lifestyle and that's fine um but i think for us it's it's that's what it is it's a lifestyle that just makes us happy mm -hmm. um i could see how you know from an, an outside point of view like you know someone watching athletes there's a um a big entertainment part right? I guess sports team also. Mm -hmm. And I guess that's when we have major competitions like the Olympics or anything. Yeah. It's great for the athletes because that's pretty much the competition of their lives and the adrenaline's running high and it's a huge challenge, but you know, also for the people watching, it's super entertaining yeah. and inspiring in a way. Um, so you can, you can kind of share your, your love for the sport and hopefully it will be contagious. Yeah. Um, I do think the the whole world will be a much happier place if everybody in, had in their routine to do a bit of exercise mm -hmm. every day. Uh, it's a good stress relief uh, method and keeps you strong, mentally sane. Um, and, you know, I, I, 
I know I make bad decisions if I haven't had my workout. Like I, the, the thoughts in my head are all jumbled up. I can't think clearly. Mm. Um, and, you know, I may get more irritable or just not communicate as effectively. Um, and I know, I know sports can help a lot with that. And so perhaps if everybody were to work out in the morning, uh, we would have like a happy, smoothly going country. I don't know. I do think it would help. Yeah. Well, maybe when we, you can get some extra time, we'll work on trying to figure out how to get everybody to exercise, exercise in the morning. That's going to be a task. You know, I have, I've tried and some, sometimes successfully, like I think leading by example, it, yeah. it really works. Right. Um, I know after I ran the Baltimore marathon, um, it was, I think it was, I don't know. There was a lot of excitement in Baltimore and I had a few people reach out to me and say, Hey, I had not been on the treadmill for five years. And after seeing the race, I decided to give it a try and I had a super good time. So, mm. you know, I think, yeah, people were, were inspired and, um, I guess happy as a result, you know, they had something new in their, in their life to try and to make them feel good about themselves. Great question. You know, the purpose of sport, um, well, that's a great question for asking, asking someone who's professionally doing a living sport. <laughs> like I just like, I'm doing swimming as, as long as I know from it. Well, like I said, at some point I said, I am a coach for, I started coaching in 98, January, January 5th, 98. And um, so it's, it's 22 years now. And um, I create only friends. So my my I, I think the purpose of sport it's changed in the last 20 years, but um, the relationship that we're building with our athletes are something that stays for life. And it's um, in these days, like I'm getting the phone calls from some of my first generation of athletes. You know, like they're they're at a different level right now. Like having hanging around with the UCSD alumni that I was coaching eight years ago, that's a, that's a different relationship. I think it's just a, it's a, it always, we always can say that swim, that, that, that um, sport is a healthy, create a healthy environment. Um, maybe not necessarily true completely because it's becoming very, very competitive. Not everybody were ready or expecting that that's going to be the level of the expe- like, uh, competitiveness when you go. It's to some point, it's kind of like a brutally, brutally competitive. And what, what you need to do, it's brutal to be able to stay at that level. Uh, but I think that relationship that you're building in the, in the world of sport uh, is something that stays forever. And, uh, and, and beside the fact that we're coaches and we want to compete, we, we are like life teachers and life friends. So that, that, that's, that's what drives me. And that's something that like, it, it applies on everything what I'm doing, even when re- recruiting. I'm recruiting the person that I'm going to be friend for life, not, not just for a season two or, or four, like you were saying in, in college. It's a great question. What do I think the purpose of sport? I think it's, I'm going to speak to this on an individual level. Sure. Um, Cause you know, I think sport, we can think about like the purpose it serves for watching it or whatever. But for me, obviously I'm an active participant. I'm an athlete. I coach people who are, whether they admit it or not, any runner is an athlete, whether you go out for, for once or not. I agree. I think the purpose of sport and particularly for something like runner, like running, it is to discover something else about ourselves um, that we might not see otherwise. Um, and so really the purpose is for us to be able to grow personally, to discover those powers, those superpowers, <laughs> Um, and also to push ourselves to live life to the fullest. And so that's why I say it's on an individual level. I think the purpose of it is really to help us become a better version of who we already are. And for me, I believe running can do that. I believe a lot of other sports, whatever it is for you, that's what you should do. Um, but I think having that, that sport and, and really, um, uh, embracing it um, and also engaging in it, it's it can teach you more. It can, can teach you more about yourself than you ever thought possible. 
The purpose of sport. Wow. What a question. That's very philosophical. Um, uh, wow. Uh, well, you know, I think um, I'm not really, a, I would say I'm not really a sports fan. What I mean by that is I don't really have a team or I don't really follow. Like I'm not the kind of person to be like, you see the game last night? Just how many points this guy, you know, and I right. know, I know I'm an outlier in that sense, you know, as a 35 year old, you know, man uh, in America. But I, you know, to me, sport was always about, you know, doing something where you're, you're always trying to improve upon whatever it is that you're doing, whatever sport it is, you know, and, and it's, and it, and it's kind of a vicious cycle in a way, because, you know, you have the, you set these goals for yourself in a sport and then you get to it. You're like, man, okay, what's next? And you, you, it just kind of keeps getting harder and harder. Mm-hmm. And the, the higher you get, the harder it gets. Right. right. Um, so to me, sport is almost like, not from the sports fan standpoint, but from, from an athlete's perspective, to me, it's always about, it, it, it's, it's really like, it's an education process. You, whatever you do as an athlete, whatever you do in sport, it becomes a learning process that you will apply to everything else. And I've done that in my career where I'm like, okay, I want to get to this level. Okay. Now I got it faster than I thought perhaps, or, or later than I thought, okay, what's next? And you go to something else. And, it's always about, it teaches ultimately to you know, sort of challenge yourself, right? So philosophically, it's more of a, it's more of a, uh, uh, of a challenge than anything else, um, individually or personally. So that's kind of how I see sport. And I think, but I don't think sport itself is better than art, for example, mm-hmm. or, 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 or literature or any, any other concepts in the sense that you're trying to achieve the highest of levels of whatever it is you're doing. And sport is just a vehicle for that where you, you know, if you like sports, you want to get better at it. If you like, if you're a musician, you know, you, you want to master this aspect of guitar and then you get, you know, it's the same stuff, right? Right. Um, so yeah, education, I guess, challenging yourself, that kind of stuff. Yeah. Whoa. Okay. <laughs> to bring out your best self. Yeah, I think so. You go around, but you can only, we're all built differently. You can only do be in this world to try and, you know, it sounds um, schmaltzy and romantic, but it's to be as good as you can be, but also bring your, whatever your best character traits out in it. If you're an introvert, then you go and do that thing. You know, if you're an extrovert and you want to do it to make friends and meet people, then great, do that. Just bring out your best characteristics, I think, yeah. Oh, Gosh, I don't think it's one single thing. I think, you know, I always tell my kids, like, my kids will laugh if they hear this. I always say your body is a temple. You know, your body is a temple. And what we want to do is we want to really eat well and be conscious and thoughtful and mindful of what we're putting into our bodies. And we also want to exercise our bodies. And we want to really think about um, our body's not just as adornment, so something beautiful, but also as a tool. And so I think of sports as a way to um, refine that tool or to enjoy and see your tool in action. You know, for me, it was a passion growing up. I mean, whether it was playing Little League or you know, uh, wiffle ball in my, the backyard with my older brothers, you know, we would keep our stats uh, so you can say we were having math lessons. I mean, there's so many things that we did. Um, But for me, it was also, all right, you got to do one, two, three. You can be good. You can be athletic. But you get to a certain level, you got to be athletic and you got to work hard. Mm -hmm. And then you're going to go against guys that are just as talented as you are or more talented than you are that are working harder. But competition if we don't keep competition going in our country, uh, we'll, our country will fail. And I think sports is a wonderful training ground. And, and I know this has been stated, and I, I don't want to get political because that's we, – we, we, Dave and I, we stay completely out of the politics of this world. But the whole, the whole process of what kind of happened where everybody wins and you got to give a trophy to everybody and that mentality, I hope we get away from that. Mm-hmm. Um, there's a time for that. There's a time to always be encouraging and it's not always about winning. 
Um, but we sometimes we have to learn how to lose so that we can win more the next time. Mm -hmm. So losing is a wonderful lesson. Um, I didn't win every track meet. I didn't win every basketball game. Uh, I don't like to lose. I thought I was competitive until I met people like Dave Clark. And then I realized how uncompetitive I was compared to people like him. Uh -huh. um, and so we, we learned so much. We learned camaraderie. We learned how to work together, even in, in things like track and field. Um, you would think that's not a team sport, but my college team, we were very much a team sport. Oh, yeah. We were very much pulling each other along. We were helping each other. We were encouraging each other. We were working out together. Yes, we were racing against each other at times, too. However, uh, we were teammates mm -hmm. and we were pushing each other. And um, I, don't, I don't think of a – for me personally, that was more of a learning lesson than anything I got in the classroom. That's for me. Um, but, you know, some people, it's music. And I have a music background a bit too. And you have to practice those things. You have to learn those things. Um, and I think all of the arts and it's, it culminates into a more well-rounded life. And to me, sports is um, very, very important. On the other side of it, it's not everything. I think the purpose of sport is to play out play out the physicality of the human spirit is it's a it's a reenactment it's an engagement um of of that that fundamental component of us as a species and being and that is that is um combative and challenging movement in all forms and i, I think that um you know, sport is really a recreation and a reenactment of, in some ways, um, like the fight and the hunt to survive or to get, whether it's, you know, to find sustenance, to, to you know, conquer a threat. Um, that is, you know, part of, part of the human condition. I, I think what, what we are as, as, beings we have we have this like this beautiful um, symbiotic relationship between movement and kind of movement and physicality and intellect and cognition and I think sport is really in uh, an exercise and a reenactment of that that physical side of the human spirit. Yeah, I think the purpose of sport, um, you know, uh, maximizing human potential is, is sort of the first thing that comes to mind. Mm -hmm. You know, that's something I've thought a lot about. And, you know, if you think of, of if you think of any contest, you know, whether it's a, you know, a little group of kids on a field that barely know how to kick the ball or, you know, a group of uh, very highly paid professional best in the world athletes, you know, competing in some way. You know, I, I, I think on some level, the participants are trying to maximize their own human potential. They're trying to play the best game they can on any given day. And I think if you're a spectator, that's that's also what you're looking for on some level. You're mm -hmm. you're looking for people to play a good game, and in theory, if both sides are giving their best effort and have maximized their human potential, um, you know it should be a fair outcome based mm -hmm. on you know the conditions of the day. And there's something about the uncertainty of knowing how that match will work out or how that race will end that. Uh, um, that, that is just purely entertaining and fascinating because you start to wonder, uh, you know, well, what makes these people tick and could I ever do that? And what would it take to be able to do that? Right. Mm -hmm. What do these people put themselves through? Right. So I think it just sort of leads to this state of wonder and fascination. Uh, but that's the best answer. You know, I, I think I have like, um, I think the side effects are it brings people together. 
and uh, you know, it, there's a lot of learning and sort of a lot of, there's, there's a lot of benefits to it. But, but if I think of, you know, why do the people themselves engage in sport? I, I don't know if I've met anyone that would say something too different from, I want to be the best I can be. I want to want to give my best effort. I want to leave it all out on the field, right? That sounds a lot like maximizing human potential. Right. And then if there's a whole industry involved in watching it go down, I think that's what you're looking for. We push ourselves to see what we're capable of. Uh, me personally or in a human level? Either. Um, to see what we're capable of. For me, I, I mean, I, I, that's for me personally, but I'm pretty sure that's um, probably the case for, you know, to, to push the boundaries um and get into um that euphoria um moment yeah <laughs> no, <laughs> Sorry. That's good. oh man what do you think the purpose of sport is that's a great question i've never been asked that before <laughs> so let, let me go back f- for me particularly um the purpose of sport for me when i was little because i've i've been playing sport in various forms since i can was old enough to walk the purpose of sport for me when I was little was to expend energy because I would have had you know if they'd if they'd had a a, a clinical diagnosis for it but for it back then I would have been diagnosed as having that um attention deficit hyperactivity disorder ADHD mm-hmm. um they wouldn't have had Ritalin or whatever you prescribed for it over right. there then so so the nearest best prescription was to just go and run around until you fell asleep yeah um, so that that was where I was, you know, I was quite good at sport. I played football, I played rugby, I played cricket, I, I did the athletic stuff, I played tennis, I did all of those things. And I think that was my mum's tactic was to just wear me out because if I didn't, I would just talk her to death. I mean, you can tell that I like talking. So imagine if what, what I'd have been like without without the um, the involvement of sport. Ah, um, on a bigger perspective. You know, I mean, sport, some people like competing, don't they? I was I was heavily competitive when I was young. And I can remember being, even if we lost a a, compet- a football match against the, 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 the other class from the same year, I would I would cry when we got beaten. I was a terrible loser and I wanted to win all the time. And I, I'm, not, I'm not like that anymore. I see the personal satisfaction in achieving something now. So there's, I suppose it depends on your personality. I played a lot of team sports when I was younger. There's definitely a bonding that comes from team sports and there's definitely some life skills that you learn from helping each other out, from understanding that in a team, um, there are there are people who have their skills. You know, you've got the guy who always gets the glory because he kicks the goal, scores the touchdown, you, you know, um, does all that. But he he couldn't he couldn't uh, he couldn't achieve that without the support of the other people. You've got the guys who like I played rugby, so you've got the big guys who are, you know, might be classed as being a bit overweight, but they have a place in the scrum. You've got the tall beam pole guys who are supposed to catch the ball. You've got the skinny guys that are really fast that go on the wings. Everybody has their part mm-hmm. and, and you all come together to make up a team. So, you know, you talked about building a business. That's the great entrepreneurs and business leaders understand that, you know, they need people who are better than them at certain things and put them all together. And absolutely. You know, so there's, a, there's definitely a, a team element. And even if you're in an individual sport like triathlon, you know, we talk about Lionel, we talk about Alistair, we talk about Barb. They will say that they couldn't have achieved their success without other people being in mm-hmm. their team, their coach, yep. their training partners, their, any, any of the medical practitioners, the people who look after their bike, the, the nutritionists. Um, so there's that, so there's that team element. This um, sport enables people to um, achieve achieve things that perhaps they didn't think were possible. So it gives them an opportunity to, to express and find out what their body is capable of and, and what their mind's capable of. You know, particularly you see this when people cross the finish line of an Ironman, that they, they've done something that they never thought that they would be able to do. It doesn't matter what time they do. Just, you know, I remember explaining to a personal training client that I'd done this Ironman and he went and told his mother and she said, that's ridiculous. Nobody could do that in a day. And she, he said, no, she said, how many days did it take him? No, he did it all in one day, mom. It took him, took him just under 11 hours. That's just ridiculous. It's impossible for a human being. So I had to take the photograph <laughs> and the medal and the certificate into prover. And she said, how, how is it possible for somebody to do that? So, but, but, you know, just before I did my first one, I, I didn't think it was possible either. So mm-hmm. um, 
it, I mean, sport is, I think, perhaps sport in the in the recent months during the coronavirus outbreak has, has probably shown people just how much they value competition mm-hmm. um, because it's been taken away from them. I think, um, depending on where you live, being able to go out for a bike ride or a run or a swim with your mates has been restricted or denied. So people have realized how much they get the social aspect of just running with people. Mm. It's, uh, that's a, that is a really general question, isn't it? Mm-hmm. So for individuals, I mean, I think it is something that brings people together, mm-hmm. right? Almost everybody likes some kind of sport, even if they don't admit it. <laughs> you know, even if they're like, well, I don't watch sports or whatever. And, um, but what I will say is that team sports are being with the team. So I, there's a guy that I knew that worked in a big company and they, they were trying to go back and look this. I am answering the question, I promise. Um, they were trying to look back through what made people successful as entrepreneurs. And they came up with two things. Do you know what those two things are? One was having participated in some kind of a team sport or a sport where you kind of lived or died together, right? Mm -hmm. So there was some kind of live or die together. And the other one is kind of irrelevant, but it was whether or not you've worked in a really crappy job. Mm. (laughs) Because people that know have worked in really bad jobs are quite driven. And if you have some participation with sports, you tend to do quite well. So I think it's good for community, but I also think it's going to keep us all from, we have a really bad problem in the US and start in the UK with obesity. And I do think people doing some sport even if it's just walk around the block, anybody can do that yeah. five times a day. I think it's really important for the future of our health. So yeah. there we go. That's my answer. Oh, I mean, what is the purpose of sport? For me, I'll think of just for running. I think for me, it's the community um, that just, that's what I miss probably the most. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, and we, fortunately I have a, a great local coach and he coordinates some some de- very socially distant small group type long runs so we're still being able to get some of the community but I think the community for me is what I get the most out of sport it's just giving me that gives me when I have the community then I have the drive to compete the drive mm-hmm. to do better so I think that's that's probably my best answer <laughs> wow that's an interesting question that could go many different ways um I'm not, I don't, I don't know if I have a clean answer for that. I think I'll answer, well, I'll answer what is the purpose of sport for me. Um, And so for me, it's, it's really about the enjoyment. Like I just, I get this, this joy from playing sport. Uh, For me, mostly from playing hockey. Um, This, you know, it's all a bunch of different things, but at the end of the day, I just, I just makes me happy. Um, Mm -hmm. Enjoy it. I think there's lots of other benefits that come after them, like health and fitness and all the rest of it. But really for me, it's just about having fun, um, enjoying life. The verb is sport. Yeah, I think it, this is kind of an, an interesting time to, to ask that as well, because mm-hmm. we're seeing kind of how, how the world is, uh, is without sports. Right. And, and I think it's making us realize the, the importance of sport beyond competition, because it, it really is. We seek sport for inspiration. We seek it for human interaction, for relatability, and, and mm-hmm. it's so much more than than you know a, a time or a, a point total at, at the end of the day. And I think that sport, in its own right, is one of the important, most important parts of community. And I think a lot of us are anxiously awaiting for it to be back. Yeah. Ooh, wow. Um, I mean, I think that the purpose of sport on a very basic level is play, right? It's an excuse to keep playing through adulthood. Uh, and I and I thought about this when I was writing this book um, because swimming is one of those activities that you see. Okay, so from a kid point of view, you see you just go to the pool or go to the beach or on any summer day. And you're just, you, you are a witness to joy. You're a witness, to just kids like, ah, you know, they're mm-hmm. in the water and they just love to be there cannonballing, you know, just, just spiraling around and just playing games and splashing. And that is very much 
pure, like it is pure play. And then, um, but at the, at the same time, you see, I'll go to the pool, I'll be doing my laps, and I will see, you know, these guys, men and women of, like, advanced age where they seem very serious and they're swimming their laps and then they leave the pool and then they do this thing. I've seen this so many times. I just love it so much where they'll dive down and like dive under the lanes to get to the ladder. Mm -hmm. But they're not just like doing it in a functional way. They're just like, they will dive down and they will kind of dolphin and they'll spiral and then they'll do a flip. (laughs) You know, they'll do something just for the pure reason of just doing it because it's fun Mm -hmm. and so i think water and swimming has that ability to very obviously very clearly bring that element of play out in all of us and i think that does translate to sport more broadly um but i think with swimming it's really easy to see and that is um i think that's why um it makes me really happy to do it that's a good question. Um, for I think for me, I think it's in, I think it's been key to help build confidence and resilience, and I think it's also helped me learn to manage my time and priorities. Yeah, you know, I, I think everyone has their own view or, or purpose of why they do it, but um, of course, the there's obviously there's obvious health benefits, right, from exercise and so forth. Um, I I admit it too, I think it also, um, for me, meets a bit of a psychological need too, because I like to push myself, I like to be competitive. And, uh, you know, I'm 48, but I I still aim for those uh, overall places. I'm not not ready to settle for, you know, too many age groups, but I've been forced to, you know, face my uh, my age a bit. But, uh, yeah, I, I, I think... I'm going to go with, yeah, I, I, I really like the, I think, confidence and resilience and, and time and managing your, your, your time and, and uh, your life. The purpose of sport. That's a, that's a complicated question. I did not admit this, but I, don't, I should have watched your podcast in the past. <laughs> For me, it pushes me to be better, to do better. It's an easy metric. For me to measure my growth um, for society, the grit that a lot of people aren't exposed to by their upbringing, whatnot, they face in sports. You know, you had that that team that always gave you a hard time. You had to work hard. You had to build up. You had to fight figuratively. You had to fight them on the court in the field to get better. You knew that anxiety. You knew that struggle. You knew that force. You had to push yourself through. So sport, I think, is another way for people to grow. That's, that's, it's, it's almost like the fertilizer. I can, uh, as a police officer, I appreciate my partners that were athletes because I know, they know what it's like to have that pain and still push through it. They know what it's like to have that difficult moment and know, hey, I'm probably going to lose, but I'm still going to keep fighting. And by just keeping fighting, you're not going to lose. And that's what I'd rather be in a fight with. That's a big one. <laughs> that's a big one. You know, right now, everybody's talking about Corona and sports is actually at a complete halt mm-hmm. right now. I mean, it might actually be the best time to judge on that kind of question, even though it's such a big one. Mm-hmm. Uh, what's the purpose? The purpose is a big part of it is, I think, is entertainment. But there are so many other elements to it. You know, people do sports for recreation. They do it for staying healthy and fit. Actually, that's, you know, a very good tool for ca- uh, counteracting aging, by the way, just to, yeah. to complement our previous discussion. But um, so it, it's, it's a uh, whole... A uh, garden of flowers. It's all different kinds of things, you know, from entertainment to a huge business to recreation to health to, you know, even finding your significant other. I mean, I met my wife on a tennis court, basically, right? So yeah, it's I, I can't, you know, distill it down to just one thing. I'm sorry, <laughs> that's too hard. I'm gonna I'm gonna answer one 
one facet of that because obviously right it's it's deep but yeah whatever sticks out to you i mean i think especially this is especially relevant now because we're not allowed to compete with each other you know we're not there's there's not in a immediate physical community around us as athletes Mm -hmm. but sport is sport is still a part of our lives um sport is still a part of our identity and i think that um a huge part of that is personal improvement personal betterment um challenge adaptation survival growth like i think that that is you know we we there's something about being human that draws us to seek out challenges dangers you know unknowns and i think that this is a a a great way to do that, you know, to find your boundaries and push them and, and on your terms. Cause what that needs to be is obviously different for different people. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I'm, I'm a person drawn to extremes, but you know, my sister has much smaller goals that are just equally as valuable and she uses sport to achieve those. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so I, th- I think it is, yeah, a, a, both a lens and a path for self-improvement. Um, I think sport for every person has a, a different purpose. I think for some people, it fills some sort of desire and need to figure out what the absolute best something you can be is. I know for me, like just the continuous sort of Sisyphean task of figuring out how fast can you be um, is something that's really rewarding. I think it's also has a beautiful aspect of bringing people together and connecting people from different backgrounds, different abilities into a common goal. So whether that is you're racing each other, but at the end of the day, um, you know, unless it's really for a professional prize, you're, you're both there to kind of support each other. And I really saw that like last year running California international marathon, there were like a hundred guys trying to go for the Olympic trial standard. Um, and halfway through, it was this really cool thing, sort of the opposite of a prisoner's dilemma where we are all there actually kind of helping each other, like, uh, it wasn't like there were only a finite number of spots. And so I think things that do bring a bunch of people together to be their best is one of the best uh, sort of embodiments of sport. Okay, that's a good one. The marathon. I uh, spectated the marathon by bike, and it was okay. super cool just seeing the humongous groups. Um, yeah, everyone had like the warm fuzzies kind of <laughs> yeah. like chills watching all these people work together, pass mm-hmm. bottles around. Uh, it was pretty neat. Uh, let's see. I would say the purpose of sport is, you know, when I think of sport, I think of two things. One is teamwork and really building that bond with other people. And there aren't that many cases in, you know, modern life where you get that sort of bond with other people. Maybe in the workplace, you have a pretty good relationship with your coworkers, but nothing really replaces like the physical effort like getting those endorphins and and pushing each other to do something that's really challenging. And I think if sport had to be individual, that's kind of, especially in this quarantine time, this last like two months, Mm -hmm. I've been kind of exploring that other side of it where it just becomes about creating something that's challenging each day for yourself and setting small goals that you move yourself forward and become a slightly better human being, whether it's physically or mentally or, you know, mastering some skill. And it's just those, those small steps forward where you're challenging yourself and eventually you become so good at something that it's like play. Right. And that's, I think that's every athlete's goal is just to become so good at something and enjoy it so much that it's all joy. So I think there's two purposes of sport. Um, so one thing I, we didn't get into is I, I played ultimate frisbee in college and I was actually a co-captain of the, uh, 2002 national championship, uh, team at Stanford, Okay. Uh, which was, uh, you know, and, and there's like, uh, which was an incredible experience. Uh, it was a whole other discussion, uh, <laughs> but it was, you know, there's this, there's this competition element of it, which is fun and it's fun to win and it's fun to, to try to win. And even though if you don't win, it's still fun. It's fun to strive and try to be better and compete. Mm-hmm. And that's really fun. Uh, and then there's this other element of it, which is just the exercise element, which is what I think a lot of the bike touring I'm doing too, is just kind of to, to use your body and feel alive and just like, it makes you feel very good. 
So I think I don't think you can sum or summarize the what's the purpose of the spore into one thing. I think there's lots of purposes, mm -hmm. and I think that you'll find that it's different for the different activities um, and depending on the goals. What do you think the purpose of sport is? Wow. Um, I'll give you a historical answer that I somewhat agree to. The, the, the hope that we don't go kill each other. I mean, you know, what was the point of medieval tournaments, right? To, to essentially right. give people an outlet for not, you know, going off and killing each other. And we're ultimately horrible, violent human beings. So I don't know. I think that's it on a practical answer. I mean, in terms of our modern world, of course, we'd like to think we're so much more nuanced beyond that. But mm -hmm. I think... I don't think we're any better than the Romans or the, or the, or Charlemagne's empire. Yeah. Are we? I don't, I mean, I don't think so. So perhaps that's not the answer you're looking for. It's a little bit more vicious. I'm not looking for I an think... answer. I'm just looking to have <laughs> an answer. I'm sure it's different than the rest of the uh, rest of your uh, respondents. Um, no, I do genuinely believe uh, that, that, Ultimately, the point of sport is for all of us is just to quell some sort of animalistic behavior that we have. I mean, I'll be honest, I do a lot of workouts and I do two a days because it makes me feel good, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, I think we're all sort of addicted to exercise and like that's a whole nother can of worms. But um, there's something raw about it, right? Sports kind of keep us all in check, keep those like natural instincts sort of, you know, quelled. Um I don't, it, it's, it's kind of what we've agreed is the more civilized approach to the alternative, which is, mm -hmm. which is much more rough, Sean. I mean, Helmut von Moltke, uh, kind of the, the German architect of the World War I battle plans. You know, I'm a big fan of history, if you haven't gathered. Um, you know, they, that was a whole school of thought there that, like, you know, without war, like, man's just bad. Like, he mm -hmm. just can't do good things. Like, it's the crucible that makes men do insane things. And, um, you know, I, I won't go so far as to, to agree with the German architects of that ideology, but ultimately I think sport takes on a little tiny bit of that crucible, right? Like through the crucible of like doing these hard things, triathlon, cycling, handball, whatever it, it is, right? Like you name the sport, that is in of itself this little battle, right? This like, you know, much more uh civilized mm -hmm. battle but but by doing that battle we gain something about ourselves about our sense of duty about our sense of belonging about our ability of resilience of grit and you know to go out and finish a triathlon is always a success because you know not that it's necessarily like oh it's what an empowering journey i did this but no but it's the fact that you did the journey at all and got through to the end that's the crucible right like you you got through the heat um, so yeah, so to, so to bring it back together, I think sport is very, is, is the, you know, civilized people answer to war and, and, and that desire, these animalistic instincts in us have to be quelled somewhere. And so we put them there. So it's, it's very much a function of biology, I suppose, if you were to believe that it's, that's an element of biology, but yeah, I don't know. So that's my answer. I think it's, it's, it's very, uh, animalistic. It's an intrinsic thing. Hmm. Um, I think it is maybe keeping yourself mentally, physically sharp and uh, happy <laughs> and just, uh, yeah, feeling alive and feeling like good about yourself, I think. Mm -hmm. I'm not because you're accomplishing something, just because you're getting out there every day and, you know, moving your body and uh yeah keeps me sane so <laughs> I, th I think it's a good thing for everyone to do <laughs> the first thing that comes to mind is kind of twofold one is uh to uh help inspire people to uh understand kind of like the challenges that life brings and the benefits of persevering through those challenges. I think everybody likes the story of an underdog in sports. Mm -hmm. Everybody likes to see the struggles that somebody went through and then an ultimate to like ultimately wind up as a champion. Mm -hmm. Everybody hates the Yankees, right? They always win. <laughs> <laughs> Apologies if you're from New York. <laughs> um, 
but uh, everybody hated the Warriors for three years. Uh, so like, I think the the stories that we gravitate to in sports are those that show us the value of uh, perseverance and show us how hard it can be to actually like do something meaningful and impactful and and mm -hmm. kind of like overcome those challenges. Um, and I think the second, at least what I have gained out of sports. So I, I do a lot of skiing now, which is um, in some ways an individual sport. I ski raced in um, up through high school and that was certainly individual, but we, we, we trained as a team, we traveled as a team. I played baseball in college and, and the team part of sports is something that I has, has always drawn me in. And even in backcountry skiing, it's, it's uh, incredibly, it's a small team, but it's people that you're relying on to save your life if need be and to make smart decisions. Um, and so I think in that case, um, at least some sports and, and a lot of the, the, the team oriented ones or the kind of like partnership oriented ones, climbing went through in there as well, um, help us understand like what it means to like uh, how you get to a point at which the sum is bigger than the parts, some is better than the parts. I, I'm, I'm not choosing the right words here, but it's how the do gestalt you gestalt principle? Yeah. Yeah. Like how, like how do you, how do you cooperate with people and what does it mean to like, it teaches us that, that relying on other people is not a bad thing. It's, you know, it, it lets you achieve much greater outcomes than if you try to go at it alone. Um, and that's something that Honestly, like I don't think about every day, but I, I try to take into the academic world a lot with me because there's so much individualism in like doing the research that's in your lane that you're most familiar with. And it's really challenging to collaborate across disciplines. A lot of the work that I do and that our lab does is working across disciplines and, and there's so much challenge that comes from it. But we see examples of when it's worked really well and the impact that it's had. And it's kind of the same thing with sports. You know, you, you see examples of when all this hard work pays off and that motivates you and to say, all right, maybe I can work a little harder. Like I, I see the benefits at the end of the day. I see this person succeeding. And um, so anyway, it's a long winded answer, but uh, maybe a little cheesy, but that. <laughs> I would say confidence in yourself. I would say that that's the number one thing I gained from, from sport is learning that if I ask something from my body and I give it what it needs to do that and I prepare adequately, like I can expect, you know, incremental results and that gives you confidence for every other thing. I think that the purpose of sport, the first word that came to mind was discovery. And I'll, I'll, I'll leave that broad. I think that the purpose of sport is discovery. Okay. Ooh, that's a tough question purpose of sport I don't know I can't imagine life without sport you know like I, I guess most people you speak to their whole life revolves around sport and so for me the purpose of my life is sport if that makes sense like mm -hmm. if sport wasn't around like I don't know what my purpose in in life would be mm -hmm. um but I think that's just like the ability of sport to bring people together um and like connect people like the amount of people I've met through sport for me is is amazing and like I've got contacts all over the world just from you know being away on training camps and um yeah competitions and just meeting different people well I feel like it's for my my mental health I feel like I've relied on sport sort of subconsciously without realizing but the older I get and if I have spells where I don't do it I certainly feel like I lose my little venting stream. Um, so it's a, kind of like my happy bug. Um, so for me, yeah, um, my purpose for sport is to feel, feel a mental and physical purpose. Oh, yeah. I mean, I, I can answer this question as a parent. I've got three boys and um, I think that uh, physical activity is the is the fountain of youth and I think it's um, a lot of what ails us in our society especially North America comes down to a lack of physical activity and um, from 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 my perspective sport is the gateway to physical activity and so 
sport first and foremost fundamentally uh first and foremost is allowing allowing kids and 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 i believe you maintain the ability to learn skills uh well into your 20s and 30s and 40s and beyond um sport is a gateway for developing physical skills physical literacy that opens up the doors to being able to have uh to have physical activity and you know, I, I, there's nothing that makes me prouder than to uh, watch a Canadian athlete stand on top of a podium, you know, getting their Olympic gold medal and, you know, tears and all that stuff. Like it's, you know, it's a, it's an exhilarating moment once every four years and our country goes bananas and I know Americans go bananas for their, for their athletes, but let's be honest, like, what do I want for my kids? I want my kids to grow up so that when they're in their thirties, their bodies feel good they're healthy and they can do whatever they want. They can play basketball. They can play hockey. They can play tennis. You know, they're not afraid to go pick something new up because they've got the physical skills and the physical literacy to, to be physically active. And I think sport's a great gateway for that. And, um, and, and I, I expose my kids to sports because I want them to have the literacy down the road to be able to do things that they want. Well, I mean, for me, and I think the way that I have, um, it sort of intentionally integrated, you know, my sport with um, the teaching that I do, with the writing and, and et cetera. Um, you know, a, a, a quick plug for, you know, the college where I work, to Schumacher College, right? Um, we run a, a series of master's programs, uh, and I've, we've recently just proposed one to start in 2021 um, on movement, mind, and ecology, uh, which really gets at sort of the, the complete synergy of everything we've talked about today, uh, where it will use movement, whatever that is, whether it's rock climbing or running or swimming or, or dance, um, as a way to connect with a, a broader ecological system, right? So for me, the role of sport, I mean, there's so many, you know, roles mm -hmm. that it plays, right? My son, who's 15, is on the Nordic ski team, and, you know, sport plays a really essential, important role for him. Um, but, you know, for me and for, for the work that I do, it's about... Um, creating an opening, uh, creating a connection with the more than human world. Um, and it doesn't matter what that sport is, whether you're you know, walking for a mile you know, down the road because it's your, your daily exercise during quarantine, um, you can connect with a, a natural landscape that way that you probably wouldn't have thought to do otherwise. Um, similarly, if you, you know, go cycle for a couple hundred miles or, or go run an ultra or something, um, you are connecting in a particular way with that particular landscape. So for me, that's essentially the, the purpose of sport is to reconnect us with the, um, the more than human world as well as with ourselves. I think that there, there almost has to be a, a distinction between like individual sports and, and team sports in my mind, um, because I do find they, at least to me, they seem to play a little bit of different roles in people's lives. And, and you could correct me if I'm wrong, like maybe, maybe you really don't feel this way as a runner. Um, but individual sports, I often think of as being really like a personal thing about self-improvement. Um, and team sports, I think of as being more about like community and culture building. Now, that said, I understand there are, there are running teams and running culture, that sort of thing. Um, but at least for me, they sort of have played different roles. Like if I am doing running or biking, that's really about me against myself it's a very personal thing. It's about connecting with my body and sort of pushing myself. Um, and team sports are really about like making connections um, and sort of feeling like you're you're a part of something. Like I always feel that there is sort of connection I have with people that I play sports with, um, people who I play hockey with that like, I don't get that in the same way with people that I work with, right? Or people that I sort of know um, from like normal life. Um, so, so I guess that would be my, my short answer is that I think it's about culture and community. Um, but yeah, that's, that's a really big question. Like you can also look at this from really different angles, right? Like on a more like you could think of it from the perspective of like national identities, right? And like national pride, these sorts of things. Um, so yeah, I feel like that was a terrible answer. I, I feel like I, I need to like think on it for like, you know, a couple hours and then like write an essay about it because it's such a big question. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, I could go on about this one forever because I have actually, I've been thinking about this. And when you say sport, I, I'm, I'm assuming you mean sports in general, yep. like running, basketball, water polo, lacrosse. It could be anything. 
any form of what you might consider competitive physical activity. Yeah. Okay. So what is that role? Um, I think sport has a very important role that we need to embrace. And I won't be cliche and say all the stuff that most people would say, oh, it teaches kids about competitiveness. It keeps you in shape. You know, it gives you a, a hobby, an outlet. Uh, we know all that kinds of stuff. Um, and, and all that stuff is very important. And I like to say that everybody, everybody needs to have their thing. Everybody needs to have their thing. And if sport is your thing and you, you need to have that yes i do agree the pr the thought though that's been in my mind a lot lately is you know i have two kids 10 and five 10 and six now and they're both into sports um and they look like they'll be kids that'll be pretty good at sports growing up and, and that kind of thing but i see the level to which youth sports are at and what parents are doing with youth in sports and I say, I, I say the word commitment, but I don't even think the word commitment really scratches the surface. I think what I see in a lot of youth sports right now is overcommitment. Mm -hmm. and, it, and sometimes I see it, I'm just like, what we do with our kids. And I do wonder about the lesson that we're teaching them. It is not uncommon. My daughter has friends who will be in four sports in one season. Mm -hmm. And they will spend a Saturday going from one to the next to the next. And the time, the, the money, and I think about the time they say spend, what, what is the opportunity cost of the time spent on some sports, especially with youth? And you could get into it a little bit with adults well, especially with endurance athletes. You know, um, should we, should an endurance athlete who's, 35 years old with a spouse and a child or two train 30 hours a week. I mean, mm -hmm. um, because you definitely see it. And mm -hmm. so I do, I think sports have a very important role because everyone needs to have their thing for many reasons, as we've talked about before and we know about, but I also wonder is sports in our society overcommitted right now with mm -hmm. some of the approaches that, that are taken. Fair and enough. I can go on, I, and at times I've wanted to go on a soapbox about youth sports and what, you know, and I played sports growing up. You know, I played, uh, I played basketball and baseball a lot. I did the cycling thing, but I don't ever remember it being like what it is now. And why is a nine-year-old traveling across the country to play in a competitive tournament? And I, I, I and is that athlete going to be injured? Burnout, mm -hmm. motivation by the time they're 14. And I see this and I'm just like, I, I don't know. So I think sports, again, everyone needs to have their thing. Um, fitness, um, stress relief, a hobby, uh, an outlet. Sports, are, uh, you know, for example, I think one of the huge challenges with this coronavirus thing now is Following sports is a huge outlet for a lot of people. Mm -hmm. No NCAA basketball tournament for me is killer. Mm -hmm. I mean, if we had that to fall back on and to be able to, to watch and enjoy, um, that's I, I think that's a huge loss in our society right now. And sports has that important role. I do think I do think though that we're overcommitted in a lot of areas, mm -hmm. especially with the youth. But um, I definitely miss a lot of those sports right now. Uh, you know, opening day for baseball was supposed to be yesterday, I think it was. Um, mm -hmm. and, you know, I think having those things taken away from our society, um, uh, you know, it, hopefully that's just more encouragement for people to get out and exercise, um, you know, to blow off some of that stress. So I, I go both ways, I guess, right now. Like I said, I've seen a lot of things and I'm seeing a lot of things in youth sports right now that I'm just, I wonder about our commitment level mm -hmm. and what we do to our children right now. Um, but uh, sports has a huge place in our lives. Ooh, the purpose of sport. That's a deep mm -hmm. one. 
Um, so the first thing that comes to mind is community, but I feel like that's probably something that a lot of people say. Um, and I do think there are a lot of ways you can exercise and enjoy sport by yourself too. I'm going to say to push yourself and relieve stress. So whether it's trying to run your first 5k or half marathon, whatever it is, um, when you have those goals and you achieve them, it's like a high on like no other and they're going to be different for all of us but I truly think sport in and of itself teaches us so many lessons along the way and just gives us something to kind of reach towards when there's so much in the world out of our control I think it is well I think there's more than one purpose but for the for each individual I believe it is self-actualization you know you know, you have, you are the only person really that has agency over yourself in your actions. And, you know, there's many ways you can express that. I mean, you could paint pictures, you could play the piano, or you could do triathlons. But in, in some way, I believe that those, that uh, self-actualization is a, a really uh, nurturing part of the human spirit. And that it's something that we all seek. You know, otherwise, we wouldn't have artists and we wouldn't have athletes. And, and uh, so I think on an, in, on an individual basis, that's really the purpose of it. Um, and competition is a very you know, simple, easy way to, uh, to compare yourself, to see if you, you know, even if it's competition with yourself, which, of course, is the healthiest competition. Mm -hmm. I mean, when you, st when you obviously in the race, you toe the line with other people, you'd like to beat them. But, but if you perform at your best and you have a PR or whatever it is, and you can say, whoa, yeah, I didn't beat so-and-so because that so-and-so had the race of their life today. I, you could have the race of your life that same day, but they still beat you because they were better. Um, and, but that doesn't diminish your own personal experience, or I believe it shouldn't. And this is something I worked a lot with when I was coaching juniors is, you know, don't just directly compare. It's fun to win the race. Everybody likes winning the race, but don't compare yourself that way to other people. Compare yourself to the person you used to be, you know, mm -hmm. you, what you were a week ago or a year ago. And I think that is helpful too. And I think also the other thing I was going to say that I believe sport does is, in a way, I think we still need heroes in our culture. Mm -hmm. And so when we read about, you know, Iliad Kipchoge, who can't be, you know, just jaw-droppingly impressed. Like, here's a guy who runs, you know, a two hour, th thing that people thought would never happen, two-hour mm -hmm. marathon, under two-hour marathon. I mean, and you look at what that guy's done for training, and, you know, and he seems like, a, from everything I've read and seen, seems like a wonderful human being. Mm. How can you not be impressed by that and not think, wow, what a cool thing. And so yeah. I guess that's, you know, for me, that's the other part of what sport does is it motivates us and inspires us. Wow. To think of one purpose is really difficult. Um, I think it's to prove something to ourselves. That's how I interpret it. Um, whether it's to prove that you can work well with people to prove that you're capable of doing something you thought was impossible or to prove even like we are the better team. Like, mm -hmm. I think, I think that would be the thing that all the drop downs can come from to prove, to prove, but I think to yourself, like I, I, even, even though sports can be a team thing, I think there's a lot of psychological stuff going on that, you have doubts and then you play a game or run a race or, you know, have a track meet or something. And it's, it's constantly proving. Yeah. I think that it's to test your limits. Um, especially for me. Uh, that's really what it was about. It was like seeing what my, what my breaking point was, right? Or mm -hmm. Just just trying to get so close to that, um, or or even expanding that over time. Um, and I, I remember look at, like looking around at some of my high school teammates who weren't working as hard as me, and I I was a little bit snooty about it probably um, because I was just giving it my all. And I I would look over and see people like getting out and 
taking a water break or stretching or whatever, um, not because they needed to really per se, just because they were lazy or whatever. And I was like, what, what's, why is that person afraid of hard work? Mm-hmm. And that, that's not really fair of me uh, in hindsight to think of it that way. Um, and not everybody t- took it as seriously as I took it. Um, but for me, it was, it was about testing myself and seeing what my limits were. And now when I look back on that, I can think like anything that I'm to go through now, like probably isn't going to be as demanding as what I put my body through then. Uh, and so I can kind of use that uh, um, just to remember like I'm, I'm resilient um, because I proved to myself over and over again that uh, something that was really hard I could get through. Um, and so personally, that's what sport means to me. And, uh, I think probably other people can relate to that too. I would think. I think the purpose of sport is to help people find, this is, I think maybe what I want the purpose of sport to be, help people find what they love and find enjoyment in what they do, um, and help them create lives that they can carry on for a long time and helps them be successful in other avenues so and connect with people and build community community there it is that's what i want i want it to be community (laughs) forget all the other stuff i said it's community (laughs) okay i'll i'll I'll, uh i'll mentally edit that out if you're listening or watching just disregard everything else that claire said yeah go with community 